戦争に行く前あの人私のお腹に手を当ててこう言ったの必ず帰ってくるピラコあの人はねきっとまだ戦争から帰ってきてないのあの人はまだ戦ってるのよでもそれが終わったらきっと帰ってきてくれるだってあの人の取り柄は約束を守るところそれだけですもの Gintama's Four Devas is one of the most impressively crafted shonen arcs I've ever seen. While it isn't at the absolute top of my list in terms of Gintama arcs, let alone shonen arcs in general, I have a unique sense of appreciation for the way in which it is approached and for what it banks on in order to succeed. Because while the storytelling is a bit more powerful and potent in a couple of later arcs by my estimation, this is an arc that only could have existed in Gintama in a way that is unique from the plot revelations we're exposed to later on. It is where we see the benefits of the eccentric style, and it is the ultimate sense of integration for the 200 plus episodes that came before it, as the tiny stories and the seemingly inconsequential or one off characters come together to defend the Kabuki district. I think it's the best demonstration of payoff in the series up until this point, with all of the prior elements from the more lighthearted contexts coming together in dramatic and emotional harmony to make it hit as hard as it does. For these reasons, this is the arc for which I would imagine there is the biggest difference in quality between those who skip some comedy episodes and those who don't. It is quite genius in that sense, and this sort of confidence, ambition, and adeptness in writing drew me to it immediately as soon as I realized what it was doing. But terrific structure, integration, and boldness alone are not enough to turn an arc into an all timer, by my estimation. For that, it has to go above and beyond with terrific character work, cohesion, and a powerful self contained narrative that not only works in a vacuum, but contributes to the thematic impact of the series as a whole. And that is where the stories of Pirako and Jirocho come in. Four Devas elevates the narrative in multiple ways. It adds a ton to Otose's character, it is the first time we see feral Gintoki, it contains some interesting political world building, and it strengthens the bonds of the trio. But the main things I take away from it are that sense of integration I mentioned, and how beautifully written of an antagonist Jirocho is. How he was able to elevate everything about this story through his narrative design. Jirocho is a man burdened by guilt, grief, and consequent restrictions that he imposed upon himself. As a young man in the past, he was a good hearted vigilante that protected the Kabuki district, who grew up as a simultaneous rival and best friend to Tatsugoro, who, as a member of the police, cared for Kabuki in much more traditional ways. Both men harbored romantic feelings for Otose, and Jirocho ultimately stepped aside to allow his partner to marry her so both of them could be happy. Since childhood, Otose was always the one to set him straight, and as such, it was said that Jirocho wouldn't be the man he was without her. Clearly, he agreed, but he had to bury those feelings and eventually marry and start a family with someone else. Regardless, these three cared for each other immensely, and their bonds were the crux of what supported Kabuki throughout these years. However, during the Joey War, Tatsugoro suffered a fatal wound while protecting Jirocho from harm, and in parting, he begged his dear friend to do two things in his stead. From that point on, Jirocho took and frequently smoked Tatsugoro's pipe as a reminder of this. Of course, he naturally took this promise to heart, but not in the manner that his departed friend intended. Having been the reason that his brother in arms died, Jirocho became overridden by guilt and interpreted his friend's request as a stifling duty that weighed him down. Feeling darkly obligated to protect Otose and Kabuki as a tribute to his friend's legacy living on, Jirocho took on these tasks not with a positive determination, but a grim resignation. He distanced himself from others due to being afraid of feeling that sense of loss again and thinking that he would be able to best achieve his goals if he did not have the distraction of human connection. And tragically, this meant that his daughter, Pirako, Grew up starved of affection from him and lived her life with the sole endeavor of trying to be acknowledged and cared for by her father. 
Jidocho did not let the memory and legacy of Tatsugoro empower him, but instead felt the ghost of his best friend holding him back from loving in order to protect the things that they both loved. He is fated to guard Kabuki, and determined to protect both the city and those he cares about in his own way. But he shuns all the good in his life through his self-loathing and reductive promises, and does not open himself up to his daughter's love. やろうはやろうのまんま死んでった。最後まで男として、俺なんぞのために守るもん残したまんま野垂れ死んでった。俺が殺したのさ。だったら俺は男捨てても、人間捨てても、生きてやろうの残してったもん守るしかあるめ。
Because while he does waver at times and requires the support of loved ones, overall Gintoki's fear of loss is overpowered by his appreciation of connection and love, and he lets those bonds push him onwards. And in symbolic proof of this contrast, in what was supposed to be a battle to the death, Gintoki defeats Shirocho not through striking him down, but by breaking his sword and pipe. Of course he doesn't kill him. He considered it part of his promise to protect everything that was dear to Tatsugoro. And what was Jirocho to Tatsugoro, if not a dear friend? The destruction of the sword is obvious symbolism, and him telling Jidocho to quit smoking is another allegory, his way of telling him to move on from this burden and live his life. This drives the point home, and through example, he teaches Jidocho that this is a much more meaningful way to live. However, that doesn't mean that Jidocho's sacrifice was for naught. As communicated by Otose and the spirit of Tatsugoro, Jidocho's heart was totally in the right place and he did fulfill the promise and protect the town for these 20 years. But it became too big a burden and the man just needed to be set free to pass on the reins to a new generation. To properly be a father to the one person that deserves his love more than anyone else. Jidocho's hardline stance was beneficial for maintaining a peaceful district, but it was at the expense of his happiness. And after all this time, it's fair to say that he deserved a rest. <laughs> Hirako fueled an entire uprising in the hopes that if her father gained total control of Kabuki, that it would lead him to a proper life with her. It really shows that at the end of the day, underneath the jokes and the murderous threats and the bloodlust, she was just a sad and lonely little girl who wanted to be loved by her father. It's all she ever desired. And while he is quite late, Jirocho is all too happy to oblige once he sees what truly matters. Kabuki is a melting pot of personality, random nonsense, and most importantly, heart. And up until this point, the series had been glacially slow in building an adherence to the city, but for me the montage in the last few minutes brought it all together. As Jirocho apologizes for detaching himself and devotes himself to Pirako, as we see those from Kabuki who make the district so special, and as we see our protagonists paying loving respect to the man who significantly helped make this thriving community possible, it all integrates into a moment that really encapsulates what Gintama is all about. And in the final scene, cohesion is once again obvious, as Jidocho profoundly admits to Pirako that he had lost his way, and casts off his self-imposed chains to pursue a proper love and life with his daughter, truly taking the mantle as a man of Kabuki by living as these people do, wholeheartedly and with affection. It's a gorgeous conclusion to an arc that would not have been possible without the tiny little steps that brought us here, as we ourselves slowly, maybe subconsciously, learned what this place that Gintoki called home was all about. And it all fully merges together, in terms of thematics and emotional soul, as the man who wanted to preserve Kabuki more than anything finally comes to understand the type of place he was protecting. It's a coming together of love and appreciation for both the places and people who have impacted our lives, and for those who have passed, who are precious to us, whose legacies will live on as long as we allow them to. Many thanks for watching. <laughs> ながらく闘争を剣撃の中に身を置いておりやしたが兄弟たちの助けにより己の真に行くべき道を悟され恥ずかしながら都政の道すがら落としてきた者を拾い詫びる旅をしておりやす名は大親分大教格いろいろと